Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll be showing you how to upgrade the hard drive and install a new battery on the iPod Classic 6th and 7th gens. Um, but before we get started, it's worth noting that if you want to go any bigger than 128 gigabyte, you have to get a 7th gen because there is a limitation on some of the 6th gens where it can only go up to 128 gigabyte. If you put in anything bigger than that, it'll still work, but it will be limited to like 128 gigabytes pretty much. So yeah, it's just worth keeping that in mind before you choose which iPod you want to use or how much you want to put in and everything. Um, yeah, but that limitation only exists on the 6th gen. If you go with like a 4th or a 5th gen or a mini, uh, it won't have that limitation either. You can go as big as you like. So yeah, yeah, I've seen people put like one terabyte plus hard drives in these. So yeah, you can really go as big as you like. Uh, but yeah, so let's get into it then. Yeah, so probably the most challenging thing with this iPod is just getting it open. Uh, because of how it's designed, the back and front are both made out of metal and um, the rear housings just held on with some little clips that go all the way around the iPod and we have to unclip them which is pretty difficult because yeah, it's made out of metal. So you can't just pry it open like you can on the fifth gen. So what we have to do, first I like to put down some tape. I use captain tape, but I guess you could use sticky tape or whatever you have here and just put that all over the front. Just so in case we slip with the metal tool, we won't scratch up the whole front of the iPod. Uh, but yeah, you will need these special iPod opening tools or also known as the iSESMO. They're just these long, thin, uh, bits of metal and they have a little bit of flex to them as well so yeah you have to use these you can't use box cutter blades or anything like that in this case so just get some of these they're pretty cheap you can get them online from a lot of different places i sell them as well on my website and on my ebay store so i'll have that linked in the description uh you probably need about between five to ten of them because we have to you have to leave them in on each clip as you go along kind of thing yeah so after we've taped up the front what you want to do is start in the top right corner here next to the screen and just insert your first metal clip and what you want to do is you want to you put them in by starting more sideways but then once they're in you just push it down pretty much you don't pry it out otherwise you'll just bend the metal housing there you just push down and that will bend the clip in and it'll release it and yeah so you want to put these in in the right position as well and in order to find that what i like to do is use uh, another housing just for reference to see where all those clips are but if you don't have that, I'm sure you can find an image or something online. I may even just upload an image or something that you could print out. And that'll just show you exactly where the clips are and where you need to put the tools when opening it. Yeah, you'll see these tools, how they have that triangular end. And it's the triangle part is not like directly in the middle. It's off to the side a bit. And I find the point on that triangle bit often lines up with the clips. So I'm pretty sure these tools were specifically designed for opening the classic 6th and 7th gens. Uh, so there is like a right orientation to put them in for each clip, which is easy to see if you have a, another housing in front of you as well. So yeah. Yeah, and once you got the first one in, just push it down as far as it'll go. Now, another thing to note with these tools are they are very sharp as well. So try not to cut up your hands. You might want to use like a microfiber cloth or something, or maybe some gloves even. So you, when you're pushing them in, you don't cut up your hands. So yeah, start with the top one on that right side, and then just keep moving down towards the bottom of the iPod, putting them in one at a time, and just leaving them in there. Otherwise, yeah, the clips will release and you won't be able to get it out. So do the four on the right side, then put one at the top in between like the headphone jack and the hold switch. And then you do the um, four on the left side, starting from the top again. And at some stage it'll pop open, most likely somewhere on the left side. You might have to put all four on the left side as well, but yeah. It'll pop open. There are two clips on the bottom as well, although I find there's not enough space to get one of those tools in there. So that's why I like to leave the bottom bit for last because um, once you got all the clips removed on the other sides, then the bottom will just pop right off. Yeah, and there is a, there's a good tutorial by um, Elite Obsolete Electronics on how to do this as well. So you can go watch that. It's just a short video. That's how I learned how to do it anyways. But yeah, one thing to note about opening these iPods, although we've got the captain tape down to prevent scratching up the screen, it's very difficult to not scratch the paint off the front plate there, just along the sides. So yeah, just keep that in mind. If you do open this up and you've got like a gray or a black one, you might be able to see some visible marks just along the sides from where you inserted those tools. It's a lot less visible on the silver one, of course, because that's like the color of the metal. But it's not that noticeable, to be honest. It's just along the side bit. If you really don't like that, you can always get a new front plate as well. They're pretty readily available. I have those on my website, and you can get them on eBay and AliExpress as well. In all different colours as well, aftermarket colours that they didn't originally come in. So if you're interested in getting some of those, 
just I'll have some links in the description as well. Yeah, so this tutorial was just for the um, hard drive and battery. Uh, there's a lot more things that can go wrong with this model, such as like a bad headphone jack or buttons that don't click or you might want to replace the screen or the front housing. I'll come out with a more full in-depth tutorial for that in the future, but for now, a lot of that stuff I've covered in my iPod Classic 5th Gen Guide. So if you want to just go check that out, because basically these two iPods are pretty much identical in terms of how they come apart and everything. It's just they use a different front housing and the software is a bit different and stuff, but in terms of upgrading them, the process is pretty much identical. So yeah, if you want to learn how to fix the buttons or the headphone jack or something like that, you can just go check out that tutorial. Yeah, so I won't speed this up, I'll just let you watch exactly how I open it.
And once that back does pop off, just be careful of the uh, battery and the headphone jack flex because those are connected to the back of the housing. So you can't just rip the thing straight off. So just pull it up gently and then put your tweezers in on that battery connector. There's like a little brown plastic tab that you got to release. So just pull that up and that battery will come straight out. Yeah, so you have to be pretty careful with that um, little brown bit of plastic there holding the battery in because uh, it is pretty fragile and it can break. So yeah, just keep that in mind. If you do break it, it is fixable though. So yeah. And after that, just folding that old hard drive back and it's just held in with one of those latch style connectors. So lift that up and then you can just pull it out. Now, in order to remove that old battery, uh, just disconnect the uh, ribbon cable there because it'll be easier to work with. And some of these batteries can be adhered on pretty strong. So you want to use either some heat or some alcohol to weaken the adhesive. And then you can just pry it out with the, either a plastic tool or the metal pry tool or your tweezers. Just make sure you don't puncture the battery because that can cause some bad smells or even an explosion if there's still a bit of a charge in there. So just be careful with that. Yeah, and for this mod, we're going to use one of the iFlash adapters. I haven't had any luck with the AliExpress adapters on this, uh, on the 6th and 7th gens, to be honest. I've gotten them to work in the 5th gens and the 4th gens and all that, but in the 6th and 7th gens, they've never booted up for me, to be honest. So I always go with an iFlash when I'm doing this mod on a 6th and 7th gen. Uh, and yeah, here we have an iFlash quad, which will take up to four micro SD cards. So yeah, it's also really thin as well. So yeah, just installing your four micro SD cards. I'm putting in four 64 gigabyte micro SD cards to give us 256 gigs of storage. Um, but you can go bigger than that if you want. And you don't have to put all four in as well. You could put one or two in. And then if you decide to upgrade again in the future, if you decide you need more storage, you can always just chuck another one in. That's why I like the um, iFlash quads because you can always just put more in in the future. So yeah, now just reinstalling that, lift up that little latch and connect it back in. Yeah, and just removing those little bits of rubber as well because we're going to be putting a 3000 milliamp hour battery in this one and those would get in the way and they don't really do anything once you remove that old hard drive. I think they just stop it from vibrating around in there. So yeah, before we seal it back up, I do like to adhere the iFlash down to the back of the logic board there just so it doesn't rattle around inside or anything like that. So I just put down some captain tape and then I'll put a bit of double-sided tape on top of that and that'll just fix it down there. But before we do adhere it down, we'll just take a look at this uh, rear housing here. So after we've taken that out, you may realize some of the clips are bent out. Some of them might be bent in more than what they're supposed to be. So what I like to do is go around with um, just a pair of pliers and the microfiber cloth and push them back in. Yeah, the further you push them in, the easier it'll be to take that rear housing off in the future. So I like to push them in quite a bit, but not too much because you don't want the thing popping off either. If you push them down flush, it won't clip at all. So yeah. Just go around and push them in a little bit. And if you push them too much, you can always just use your tweezers to pull them back out a little bit again. Yeah, now's also a good time to check. Um, if you had bent the housing while removing it, you can always bend it back at this stage now as well. So just push it up like against the side of the table or something like that and just make sure all the sides are flat and everything. But you shouldn't have bent it if you opened it properly. Yeah, and once we're happy with that, just reconnecting the headphone jack flex cable back to the logic board and now adhering down that iFlash adapter. Yeah, and as I said earlier, we'll be putting a 3000 mAh battery in this iPod uh, and that'll fit just right on top of that iFlash adapter. So yeah, I've done this before. There is enough space to fit both an iFlash quad and a 3000 mAh battery in the slim version on this model and on the fifth gen as well. All we have to do is tuck down the uh, flex cable for the hard drive. So you just have to fold it over or fold it down like this. So it's a bit out of the way. And if you didn't do that, then it's possible that when you put the battery in, it'll just um, sort of smash it down and it might break it. So you want to fold it over before you try putting the whole thing back together. Yeah, and as you can see, it is still very low profile with this battery and that adapter. So there's, there's more than enough space for it. Just lifting up that battery connector and then plugging it in. And yeah, now once you're happy with that, 
Uh, before we seal the iPod back up, you do want to plug it into iTunes, restore it, load some music onto it and give it a proper test to make sure everything's working properly because, yeah, it is quite a pain to take this iPod apart. So we want to make sure everything's working properly before we um, seal it back up there. So, yeah, when you plug it into iTunes, it'll just come up with that restore iPod screen. So just click restore. Uh, you may have to download the software if you've never restored it on this computer before. Yeah, and so the things you want to test for here are all the buttons and the headphone jack and you want to check that your storage is good as well that it detects everything and that it's got the right amount of storage and yeah once you're happy that everything's working properly now it's time to seal the ipod back up so just make sure that battery's in the proper position there and then fold the rear housing over and just clip it back in and it should just snap shut and there we have it our 256 gigabyte ipod classic with a 3000 milliamp hour battery so yeah there we go uh, and you can just give it a wipe down with isopropyl alcohol as well because, um, yeah, usually these are pretty dirty when you get them used or whatever. Yeah, so this one was actually a mail-in repair. A customer had sent this one in for a, a battery and hard drive upgrade and I offer that as a service on my website. Uh, you can just book it. Go to partspluspods.com.au and click the mail-in repair section um, and you can just select the upgrade, add it to cart and, yeah, all the prices are displayed up front and it'll just give you an address to send the iPod to and then you mail it to me, I'll fix it, I'll send it back and it's pretty easy. No don't have to message back and forward and everything, it's just add it to cart, check you out and you're good to go. So yeah, if you're interested in that, just go check that out on my website. Uh, I think for this mod specifically, I charged about 200 AUD for the 256 gigabyte and the 3000 milliamp hour battery. I do offer that worldwide as well, so if you're overseas, like from America or Europe or something, you can mail it to me from overseas and I can still fix it for you, if you like. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you liked it, give it a like. Uh, follow me on TikTok, because I upload lots of shorts of me doing this type of stuff there as well. If you're interested in getting this done, go check out the mail-in repair section on my website. Thanks for watching, and bye. See you next time.